I'd like to take a look at using a MIDI controller or a MIDI keyboard to trigger samples in Max. We'll take a couple samples. Right, for now, we'll just use a playlist object. Uh, later, we'll look at uh, the buffer and groove objects, which are a little more versatile and a little bit more interesting. Uh, in this case, we're using separate playlist objects because we might want to play some of these sounds simultaneously. If they were all within one playlist object, you would only be able to play one at a time. Um, we're going to use note in, which transmits the pitch and the velocity, and in this case also the channel, uh, of your MIDI keyboard that's plugged in. So I'm hitting middle C, which is a 60, at a velocity or what translates usually translates to volume of 108. When I release a note, the velocity goes to zero. Okay. Um, it's a little hard to see with these, but I'd like to print note and so we can see really clearly what's actually happening. So if I, I'm going to push and hold down middle C, you see a velocity of 113, note of zero. Uh, as we saw in the previous video, uh, message order in max is right to left, so we'll get the velocity and then the the node first. And then when I release this note, you get a velocity of zero and another message that indicates which note was released. Okay. Um, so you'll get the note 60 in this case. You'll get the note 60 when you press and when you release the key. That's a really important feature that might cause some hiccups a little bit later. Anyway, uh, we know that 60 is middle C. Um, Every additional integer up is a semitone up, so C sharp would be 61, D would be 62. Um, 62 is D, 64 is E, and 65 is F. So if I just want to use C, D, and e, C, D, e and F to trigger these four uh, samples, all I need right here is a select 60, 62, 64 and 65. I'm going to have the note in, outlet, left outlet of the note in, which will send the pitch into the left inlet of the select, the value to be tested. If that matches a 60, it will send a bang out of this outlet. That bang can be used to play this uh, audio sample. We will trigger these with a message of one. Uh, again, because all we're interested in is in playing the first audio sample in this playlist object. In this case, the only audio sample. Um, if we had playlist objects with multiple uh, audio samples in them, you would have different numbers here, of course. Uh, but in our case, we're just going to keep it simple. So this will be C, D, E, and F. Remember, the right outlet is if it doesn't match anything. It will send a bang out of this outlet. Um, we'll have a gain slider connected to uh, all of the playlist objects, easy DAC, number of both channels, um, and that's it. Uh, we got repeats of the same sample. Um, so let me just replace some of these. which is which, but in any case, nice. Uh, so you might not be able to tell, but when I push the note, if I push C, it plays this, but when I release C, it plays it as well. Okay, again, because we're getting the note name is being sent on note on, and on note off. So when you press and release. So in class today, we looked briefly at the strip note object. Um, this object filters out note off messages. It's exactly what we need. Uh, so we are going to, into the left inlet, attach the uh, corresponding pitch and the velocity. So when I press middle C, and release it, it just plays. It filters off 
the note off objects. Uh, let me just demonstrate really quickly, just to be as clear as possible, what's going on here. So I press middle C and release it, and all we get is one uh, instance of the note C, right? Um, pressing these different keys. If we were to attach the print object above the strip note, right here, if I were to press and release middle C, you get a note on and a note off. Okay, it's that simple. Uh, it's a really simple um, object, but it's going to save you a huge headache. Uh, you know, at the opportune when, when you confront this issue. Um, we also notice in class today that if you don't attach the velocity. If you don't attach the velocity to the right inlet, it won't work. So in this case, um, all we have is the note and not the velocity. I'm pressing C and we're not getting anything. Okay, so we need to have this attached in order for it to work. So this works pretty well. Um, it's not terribly versatile. All you can do is press play. You can't stop it, and you can't um, control the the amplitude or the volume. Okay. So I'd like to take a look at some ways to make this a little bit more uh, more nuanced. Um, before we do that, before we think about controlling volume, let's say you have this system. The strip note works fine if you have short little samples that you don't need to stop after you've, you've um, uh, triggered them. But if we have a longer sample, let's say a trumpet right here, let's add uh, a G. And let's say we wanna play the trumpet when we hit the G on the keyboard. Um, I hit the G, I release it, and it just plays, okay. If I wanted to stop that G, I would have to get rid of the strip note thing, the strip note object. But obviously that's not going to work well with these samples over here. So in this case, the best thing you can do uh, is have a separate note in, or the same note in, even. It doesn't matter. Uh, select 67. We'll make a separate one. It doesn't matter. You can have as many node in objects as you need. Um, so right here, uh, the 67 again is the G. We don't need it here on the left side because we don't really want the strip note. Um, and so remember that if we were to send this a one, it plays. But if we send it a zero, it stops. So all we really want is something that alternates ones and zeros. Luckily, we have this nifty object, one of our best friends, uh, and that's exactly what it does. When you press the toggle object, it sends a one, and when you turn it off, it sends a zero. And we can, of course, send this a bang to turn it on and off. If you send it a bang, it sends a one, it turns it on, or it turns it off. So all we need to do um, to essentially have something that mimics the note off uh, function of, uh, of MIDI is create this toggle object. So when I press the G and hold it down, it'll play through. And when I release it, it stops playing. Of course, it's not terribly elegant. It always starts over at the beginning. But you have a little, again, a little bit more control. Uh, I, a lot of the details that go into this kind of thing really depend on the sound samples that you're using, what you need them for. Uh, but this is just to illustrate that you can have uh, certain samples that are working entirely with the note on messages using a strip note object, and then some samples that can be uh, making use of the note on and note off messages. Okay. Now, let's say we wanted to um, also have the keyboard control velocity, or amplitude, or the gain. Currently, we're not even using this outlet right here. 
the velocity of note on messages. So regardless of how hard or soft I play the keyboard, I, I, I'm not really getting any, obviously not getting any change in dynamics because the dynamics, the gain is being controlled by this gain slider. So what we have to look at, uh, we have to introduce a new object here. I'm just going to duplicate this because we have a very similar uh, structure. Um, I'm going to scroll right a little bit. One way that, you know, you've reached the limit of your max window here, you can't go further right. I sometimes like to just have uh, a stray button if you zoom out really far and put a button way in the edge. Then you have a lot more room here to, to move around uh, and scroll. Um, anyway, we have this note in, a strip note, select. The select object sends a bang if the input matches this number. But we're no longer, we're not only interested in bangs to play or stop samples. We're also now interested in uh, a little package of information, essentially, that says, uh, which one of these samples should I play and what should I set the velocity or the gain or the level to. So we're going to have to basically combine those into a little package of information. Okay, so we have our strip note object for now. We're just uh, focusing on note on messages, right? And this will give you the pitch and the velocity. Let's combine those into one message. So pack ii. Ii means integer, integer. So all we're doing is combining what were originally two separate messages into one. Okay, and the two arguments indicate what the nature of those of those messages are. So I'll clear this window. If I have a note in, I'm going to play a C. You see the middle C, 60, and then the velocity. I'm going to play it louder. Okay. Now all the pack does is it combines what were originally the two separate outlets into one message. You'll see why this is important. Now instead of select, we're going to be using the route object, 60, 62, 64, 65. Uh, it's very similar to select, but instead of sending a bang when the uh, argument matches one of these, when the input matches one of these arguments, it will actually send uh, route whatever the next message is. So in this case, I was playing middle C, uh, and we were getting 60 and the velocity. So what's going to happen is if I play middle C right here, it's going to say, all right, we're receiving a 60 and then another number. We're going to send that other number out of this outlet. OK, so um, let's just break this down again. I'm going to play a C quietly. You see, all we get is now the velocity. If you play it louder, you get a slightly higher velocity. We no longer get the number C. All we're getting is the velocity. Okay. In this case, we didn't get the number 60 either. All we got was a bang. The route message doesn't send a bang. It sends the next number in the list. Okay. Again, that's uh, uh, an important but subtle difference between select and route. This allows you, the route allows you to route messages based on their first. Um, the first component of that message. Uh, so we're going to use this to control the amplitude of the gain slider. I'll just copy this right here. So what we want to do is when I press C, uh, it is going to set the volume and then it is going to play the sample. And then, oh, we already have a, and then that will be output to the easy deck. So I'm gonna play the C, play a little louder, a little quieter. Okay. So now depending on how loud you play it, it sets this volume right here. Again, this, is a, just a really quick and dirty way, really simple way of, of setting this up. Uh, there's a lot more nuance that can be done with this, which we won't necessarily look into right now. Right now, we don't even have an envelope 
all we're doing is setting the velocity it's not even uh, going down afterwards so you might get if you play a really loud one and a really quiet one you might get a strange you get this kind of strange distortion because it starts over and then it drops the volume down really quickly and so it has um you know it, it needs a little bit more nuance um, there's also a danger here um, with the order of of messages ideally what we should have is um, a trigger object that will send first the integer of the velocity and then it will press play they'll send a one uh, that would be the I think the best way to do it just so that you're not inadvertently if you switch the order of these things you're not inadvertently pressing play and then changing the velocity, uh, which could cause a couple little hiccups. Um, we could also have this outlet of the playlist object sends playback notifications. Let me just demonstrate really quickly. Uh, if I want to hit play here, it says start one and then the file name. When it stops playing, it'll send, I think, a stop, a uh, done, done one piano harmonics. So we can have, of course, another select object here. When it's done playing, we can have that turn the volume, the gain, to zero. And so when this plays through, whenever it's finished, it'll set it back down to zero. Um, so, yeah, let me just duplicate this. For all four samples, of course you can have as many samples as you want. playlist objects paste replace um, and again it's it's clunky it's not a, a terribly sophisticated instrument but it gives you a little bit more control over the dynamics over what you're doing It's just a little bit more nuanced uh, than this one over here. I'll get rid of this. All the same volume. Right. Uh, so there are a lot of little tiny things that you can add um, to make this a really personalized, um, just really um, uh, versatile instrument to do whatever it is that you need it to do. Uh, one last thing I'd like to look at. Um, right now we're just using this to trigger uh, samples in the playlist object, but this can of course be used. Um, we can use the same setup here to control, let's say, uh, I'll delete this right now just so we don't get too much Too much noise from this. Uh, we can use this to control um, for example uh, now you know we'll look into that a little bit later. Uh, I think this is a lot of information and a lot to wrap your head around so take some time and and play around with this uh, and then we'll dig a little bit deeper into customizing this stuff and then integrating it with let's say a, a filter and biquad filter or cycle objects or low frequency oscillators some of the other things that we've been looking at through the semester enjoy